Hello, dear friends. Here we are at Kardec Radio. Welcome, dear friends. Kardec Radio live, live from Northern Virginia, United States of America. Tonight, we are going to begin a new program every Friday. For quite a while, we are invited by the Spirit Mentors of Kardec Radio to start prayers for the USA. And you're invited to join us. And if you live in other parts of the world, we are all interconnected, right? So it's not only about one country versus another. Well, right now, we need prayers for a country that has a particular role on earth. According to Emmanuel, through the medium Chico Xavier, as stated in the book, uh, on the way to the light, the United States of America is part of the, the brain of the world, according to the high spirits. And as such, we needed to harmonize this brain to help this brain feel some serenity. Why not? We need serenity ourselves. So we're going to join forces and ask everybody, whomever you are around the world, please join us. Join us in this beautiful opportunity to pray, to find serenity, to share some serenity, to find some room for togetherness and boost higher levels of tolerance. We need more tolerance in the world. This is prayer for the United States of America. And you're invited to join us. If you feel like joining this program for the next year and a half, write to us at Kardec Radio, Kardec Radio at gmail.com. You may join us to do this prayerful moment. Okay, tonight, as we kickstart this beautiful opportunity, we have here with us a dear friend, dear friend, John the Rosa. Thank you, John, for being with us at Kardec Radio once again. <laughs> My <laughs> right, pleasure. John. My pleasure. So, John, we what did you feel when you heard about the mentor's recommendation about the uh, you know, a program where we join forces to pray for the USA. What was your first feeling? Would you like to share? I thought, what a wonderful idea. If, if our country at this time really needs this type of harmony, as you suggested. And, and, and what why better way? Think? Yeah. And would you like to, to share the reasons why you feel like it's so convenient and appropriate, it's fitting to, to do so? I think that there is this uh, continued separation between people on one side of the politics and people on the other side of the politics. And we need to bring fraternity into this environment that we're in for people to understand that we're all in this together and we need to join together to build a better society. So, John, since you've been in America for quite a while, you were born here as well, um, do you think we are living a very peculiar time in the United States? What's your take on it? Uh, it's probably the most uh, interesting time that uh, I can remember. Uh, mm -hmm. The I, I, when I was uh, living living here, I remembered that there was always the collegiality that was existing uh, in our, especially in our political system. Uh, even though they had differences, they would come together and compromise. And that's, that's not happening now. And it, 
needs to come back, that idea of compromise. Uh, we've, we've lost that, that meaning. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting, John, because, you know, as I came from Brazil, I was raised at a generation where we looked up to the United States as like, you know, and it reminds me of the Superman movie, like as if the United States represented this beautiful superhero force that is going to rescue the world and help the whole world. And right now, it's such a paradoxical time in which some minds are trying to convince us that we no longer care for the world, that we're apart from the world. And I know this is not what actually America is all about, right? No, not at all. But there's been in, in the past <clears throat> issues where uh, people need to be stimulated to uh, fall back on our, our values of accepting all people into our country. There's always been that segment of people that uh, wanted to be separate. And that happened during World War II, before World War II. Uh, and now we're getting, trying to get back at, into that same situation where we're uh, being separatist and being selective about who we let into the country. Yeah. And that has to change. Yeah. So because spiritism is this light that brings us together, we are asked tonight to begin with all the listeners, all the viewers. Let's join our hearts, irrespective of nationality, and pray for a country that promises to deliver this coordinated effort, building bridges of friendship around the world. It's on all of us to believe in this Christ conscious plan and invest on it. We believe in it. Let's affirm from now on. We know the United States is here for the world and let us really feel that we're joining forces with the governor of our planet to do so. So in that light, we're going to read a message from a book by Emmanuel, Emmanuel through Chico Xavier, who disclosed to us in the book On the Way to the Light that the United States is part of the brain of the world and is here to coordinate the efforts of the nations with fraternity, kindness, and progress. So let us talk about this light that comes from above. So from the book, Our Daily Bread, chapter six, it's all about the light, making this light. So our dear John is going to kindly read it for us so we can break it down and then say a prayer together. Make use of the light. Jesus from John, Chapter 12, verse 35. Walk while you have the light so that the darkness does not overtake you. Meditative persons will encounter divine thoughts as they analyze the past and the future. They will see themselves placed between two eternities, that of the days that have passed and that of the days yet to come. As they examine the treasures of the present, they will discover their precious opportunities. In the future, they foresee the blessed light of immortality, whereas in the past, they behold the darkness of their ignorance, the wrongs they committed, and the experiences they handled badly. A crushing majority of people have no other picture regarding the recent or remote past except one compromise of ruin and disenchantment. This compels them 
to reevaluate the resources at hand. Thus, in spite of being transitory, human life is the flame that puts you in contact with the work you need to do in order to evolve rightly by taking advantage of this blessed opportunity you can learn attain accomplish and reunite you can redeem correct reconcile and enrich yourself in the lord reflect on the master's remark and you will grasp its enlightening meaning walk while you have the light he said take advantage of the gift of time you have received by doing spiritually constructive work lift yourselves from your lower condition by acquiring a higher understanding without the signs of improvement and accomplishment as you go along you will be dominated by the darkness that is you will waste your sacred opportunity by turning to in unworthy impulses and after the death of the body you will return to the same place of darkness from which you emerged in order to climb new steps on the sublime mountain of life <laughs> that's a lot <laughs> that's a lot right certainly and quoting from Jesus in John right John <laughs> <laughs> it's inviting us to fulfill our mission our task our role right mm -hmm. so I think it comes hand in hand with the, the proposal of the program first is let's raise awareness of our role here in the United States of America for all those who are in the United States of America whether you were born here or not we're in the same boat we are pushing towards the fulfillment of it all but there is a warning if we don't there'll be consequences what do you think John uh, I would say this is so appropriate now, uh, as, as you mentioned, especially towards the end where we, we get back into the darkness if we don't take advantage of the opportunity that we have now. Uh, we need to focus on, as it says here, the treasures of the present that we'll discover their precious opportunities. And this, at this time to come together, to raise our voices in unity with, with other peoples so that we discuss what we have in common rather than focusing on those differences that, that we have. Yeah. Do you, do you think that helps us um, reconcile with our identity as a nation? Because sometimes right now it seems that we are, we are refusing to embrace the very identity of the country that was created at its foundation at the Declaration of Independence. When we say that everybody, as you said, we're all equal under God, etc. So it seems that right now we forgot about the very foundation of it all. And yeah, this I, message comes to remind us that it's meant to be this way. It has to be coordinated, but it can't be intolerant. We, I think over our history, we have gotten off of the uh, foundation that, that the fathers gave us. Uh, even back then, they had slavery. Uh, and some form of slavery has uh, continued into the present. 
when you look at uh, the Hispanic people that work for us uh, at such low wages, that's basically a form of slavery. Yep. Uh, uh, so we we need these wake up calls along the way, and I think this at this time it's it's so blatant that either you're going to see it or you're going to try to masquerade around it like uh, some people offer the fact that uh, somebody's taking my job or they're cutting into my my med health health benefits uh, we again have to embrace what christ what buddha talked about what muhammad talked about they all talked about a brotherhood and helping people loving god and helping people mm -hmm. and it's interesting you're saying that because in this message that emmanuel discloses to us he says examine the treasures of the present and then you find the precious opportunities that you may have at hand so we we have our opportunities we just need to be to focus on what we have at hand the very opportunities the other day i was listening to um somebody who was uh, making a comment in a radio i forgot which one and they talked about you know the way we may feel melancholic like the the anthroposophic temperaments melancholic phlegmatic etc and sometimes we miss opportunities they are in front of us and we miss them just because we don't believe they are for us and then we're upset with others thinking they are to be blamed for the missed opportunity but it is on us and i see nowadays a lot of depression anxiety and panic syndromes and chronic stress and at the end of the day, people are trying to find somebody to blame for, for the missed opportunities that they have. And in this message, Emmanuel is saying, if you focus on the very present meaning, being mindful, you see that you are granted several opportunities, right? Opportunities are given to us uh, each day, uh, there was a, 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 a acquaintance of mine that uh, was talking to the other day, and she was. We were, we were talking about the political political system, and she mentioned she was worried about socialism, and I tried to remind her that it's part of socialism is some in the fabric of our country with so many services that we that we have the, the firemen the policemen the library system even part of our health care system but she was very very concerned about uh, the sharing and she's a she's a very uh, uh, giving giving woman but she we got into this discussion about uh, the the top one one percent needs to to open their uh, their pocketbooks to to other other people and, and share this this wealth that they have and here's the here's the opportunity it's 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 so evident with so many people that need help in our country. And these people need to wake up and to share uh, with everybody else. Yeah. And you know, it's interesting because Emmanuel is bringing to us the very awareness that we need to recognize that we're given the light and it's not taken by anybody. We just need to make effort to sublimate the, the old conditionings of the past and take this opportunity. So for all those who are 
given this opportunity, let us let us take the very moment to cherish the given light that we have at hand and not despise it or not f forget about the mission. And it makes me recall the very first line, the first two lines, right? Or the first line, I would say, of the National Anthem. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light? It's all about the light that we need to see, right? We need to mm -hmm. embrace and take this opportunity. Let us believe in the good. Let us not believe in the forces that are trying to convince us that the United States is not here for the world. The United States has its promise to fulfill a mission as the coordination of this brotherhood around the world, fraternity, solidarity around the world. So let us be the ones who not only believe in it, behave accordingly and share this light. So now we would like to say a prayer. I'll, I would like to ask everyone to join us in a prayer. And I would like to ask John to begin the prayer and pass it on to me so we can do this collective prayer with the listeners. Shall we, John? Okay. Let us close our eyes if you would like. Let us raise our thoughts up to the Most High, the Mother, Father, God, Lord Jesus, all those spirits that surround us during this time of such solidarity and fraternity. And let us take advantage of this particular message that we listen to and discuss tonight as that message hits us right where it should. And that is to not waste the opportunity. Let us take advantage of it throughout each and every day that we are able to interact with those we come in contact, our family, our work environment, our social environment. Trying to embrace all without necessarily having to preach, but to live as Christ did by example, by his facial gestures, by smiling and helping spontaneously when necessary. I will. As we feel then the call to join our hearts and minds, let us all visualize in this prayer the sacred heart of our master and governor of the planet, Jesus Christ, enveloping the whole United States with compassion, with loving kindness. Let us visualize people walking in the streets and expressing the, their generosity, their smiles. Let us feel the very presence of the Christ enveloping the whole United States of America with peaceful and serene vibrations. May we really see the lights in the dawn of re a regenerated 
planet. Master Jesus, count on us. And we all unite ourselves in gratitude for the opportunity of being here. We already visualize with you, Master, bridges of friendship from the United States to each and every nation in the world. Connections of progress, of solidarity, true efforts of peacemaking on earth. We can hear the voices of the leaders of the world with you, recruiting everyone to keep investing with our hearts and our reasoning in the direction of loving this planet, every nation. And as you excuse us, especially at this moment, we visualize it, the peacemaking, loving kindness efforts manifesting throughout the United States of America. We thank you for our unity around the world, for this opportunity of being here with you, Master. And may all of our families feel the call to partake in this important effort to pray for the fulfillment of this nation's mission. Thank you, and so be it. So be it. Yes, Carol Correa, let our light shine as a nation, fraternity towards all directions. Exactly, exactly. So, John, would like to thank you for being here with us and starting this opportunity. I know you'll be with us at another time or some other times, and we hope so. Yes. Would you like to say a final, a final message for those who are with us now? Yes. Keep your light shining because each one of us has that brilliance that comes directly from our hearts. Yes. Let it shine, let it let shine, shine, let it let shine. It shine. <laughs> right? Thank you, John. Thank you for your time, for your presence, for your smile. Thank you, dear listeners. And we'll be back next Friday with another friend who will be joining us for these moments as we pray for the United States of America. A big hug to all. Thank you, John. Until next time. <laughs>